While many of us may start with a single source of income, as we grow our wealth, it's important that we diversify our streams of income. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Because the more income stream we have, not only is our risk mitigated because we have money coming in from different places, greater chance our wealth will grow faster. So in that spirit, let me share with you 10 income streams that you want to be aware of and start adding to your tool belt as you build wealth. All right, let's start with the first income stream and the one that most of us start out with, your primary earned income. This is income that comes from your primary job. Your job as a consultant, software engineer, or a carpenter. You're trading your time for money. You show up for work, you get paid. You don't show up unless you're using your PTO, you don't get paid. And this is how many of us made our first dollar working for a company, providing our services, and receiving a paycheck. However, if you want to grow your wealth, you don't want to spend your entire career relying on this primary earned income as your only source of money. For one, it's risky. What happens if your company downsizes or gets bought out? You might be an exceptional worker, but now you're out of a job and out of one income that your family was relying on. Two, you pay a lot in taxes. Of most of the income streams that we'll talk about here, earned income is one of the highest taxed. Income tax, payroll tax, everyone gets a piece. Three, it requires a lot of work. In order to earn this income, you have to actively work. No work, no income. Thus, this way of making money done for a long period of time can be stressful and tiring, especially if you feel like you have no other options. Bottom line, we all start somewhere, and many of us start by trading time for money. In the short run, that is totally fine. The key is not to stay there. We want to work to leverage our primary earned income to generate other streams of income. All right, moving on. Number two income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt. Side hustle income. This could be in the form of additional contract or freelance jobs you take on on top of your primary income, especially if you have a highly marketable skill set. For example, let's say you're a highly skilled financial analyst and you make a mean forecast model, and your sister's boyfriend is trying to start his own business but doesn't know how to do any kind of financial modeling. Well, you can sell your services to generate extra money. Or let's say you design for a Fortune 500 company. Why not leverage your design skills and sell your skills online? With platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, you can easily find clients that will be thrilled to pay you for your design work. And if you don't want to be creating financial models and design work in your off hours, no problem. Your side hustle doesn't have to be something related to your day job. With the internet, it's so easy to start a side hustle in any area as long as you have a computer and a connection. Now, you want to be careful not to buy too much and let the side hustle become another 40-hour job on top of your main job. Also, you want to make sure, based on the contract of your employment, you're not breaking any rules by selling your services elsewhere. But even a small side hustle is a nice way to dip your toes into the world of multiple income streams. All right, but let's say that this side hustle of yours is starting to pick up some steam. More clients are asking you to create their financial models and your design work is in high demand. What to do then? Which leads to a next income stream. Number three income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt. Business income. Technically, your side hustle income can fall under the business income category from the beginning, but many of us will not know if the side hustle gig will be a one-off thing or something we want to continue doing for a long-term business. A small side hustle is a non-risky way to test out some of your business ideas. All right, so let's say that you see some potential with your side hustle and you want to invest your time and energy for the long run. You want to expand your client list. You want to build out more services and products. You want to treat it like an official business. Well, great. Unlike your primary earned income where your earning is capped based on what your company is willing to pay you, when you run your own business, the sky's the limit. If you have a great product or service, the stream of income has the potential to build really big wealth. Additionally, another great benefit to building out business income is the ability to minimize your tax burden. You can deduct all ordinary and necessary expenses from your business income. For example, computer, office supply, cost of goods, and even your home office if you use it to run your small business. All right, but let's say that the idea of running your own business is not for you. Then what? What are other ways to diversify your income? Which leads to the next income stream. But before we go there, in the theme of mitigating our risk, let's talk about online security. We all live on the internet in some form. There is a trace of us somewhere online. Don't believe me? Do a quick exercise. Do a Google search for your name or your email address and see what comes up. When I first did this, I was pretty uncomfortable with what I found. My full name, email address, home address, previous employer, and even a few of my relatives. That's why I've been using Aura the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. For me, it's already had 20 successful data broker removals with five more in progress. These data removals not only reduce unnecessary spam emails and phone calls, but it protects me from hackers. Hackers who could exploit us by using our sensitive information to access our social media account, bank account, or other personal accounts. 
and Aura does more than just data removal to protect me and my family online. I get other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download several different apps, and all at one affordable price. I value my privacy and I value yours. So go to my special link to start your free two-week trial today. It doesn't cost anything to test out this tool. I'll also have the link in the description below. In today's digital age, we can't afford not to protect our personal information online. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe so you can focus on more important things in life. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. Number four income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt, interest income. Interest income is simply making money from lending money. You likely own a bank account, and if you own a bank account, you probably have or had put money into a savings account or a certificate of deposit. Then though it may not be a lot of money, you likely earn interest on that deposit. This is a form of interest income. If you have a sizable amount of cash, it's a good idea to hold it in an account that pays some type of interest income, high yield savings account or a certificate of deposit. Now, you want to make sure you have enough liquid cash available at all times, but if you don't need the money for several years, why not earn some interest from it? But I want to be clear here, interest income will not help you build wealth. It might help your cash somewhat keep up with inflation, but that's about it. So what are some income streams that will truly help you build wealth? Let's get into a few of them. Number five income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt, dividend income. Dividend income is similar to interest income, but instead of making money from lending money in dividend income, you're making money from your percentage ownership of a company. For example, let's say you own a piece of Apple stock. When you own this Apple stock, you have ownership in Apple as a company. Though small it may be, you are still an owner. And when Apple makes money, they can choose to either reinvest that money back into Apple, or they can offer dividend payouts to their investors you, the part owner. Now, some people treat dividend income as additional income to spend. It's tempting, extra money that's deposited into your bank account for just holding the right stock or the right fund. However, my recommendation is to resist the temptation and reinvest the dividends. And no need to do this manually. Make it automatic so whenever your fund pays out dividends, it knows to automatically reinvest in order to buy more shares. In the line of multiple income streams helping us to build wealth, when we're regularly reinvesting dividends into our portfolio, we're supercharging our long-term returns and wealth through the power of compounding. More shares are bought with the reinvested dividends, and those shares will in turn generate dividends of their own in the future. Real quick, if you haven't already done so, make sure to download your free one-page PDF guide that goes along with this video. Pretty much everything I'm covering here in a simple to digest one-page format. So go to the link I'll have in the description below to grab your free copy. Number six income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt to supercharge your wealth growth. Capital gains. In my book, the real secret sauce to wealth building. Simply put, capital gains refers to profits gained from sales of capital assets. This could be your home, an index fund in your portfolio, or even a bag you bought at a discount store. Pretty much any type of assets that you own. And capital gains occur when you sell the assets for more than what you originally paid for. Bought a home for $200,000 and you sell it for $300,000, you have a capital gain of $100,000. Bought a stock at $100 and you sell it for $300, you have a capital gains of $200. Bought a discount bag for $10 and you sell it for $15, you have a capital gain of $5. But of course, like anything in life, the devil is in the details. Here are a few nuanced rules you want to be aware of when it comes to capital gains. For one, the length of time you held the assets. For example, based on how long you held the asset for, you're subject to either long-term or short-term capital gains tax rate. Typically, if you hold an asset for more than one year before you dispose of it, your capital gains or loss is long-term. If you hold it for one year or less, your capital gain or loss is short-term. Short-term capital gains are typically taxed at federal income tax rate, which is higher than the long-term capital gains tax rate. Two, with real estate assets, home ownership exemption. If you live in a property for at least two years, your first $250,000 in profit or $500,000 if you're married are tax-free due to home owner exemption. I've known people who've done really well utilizing this rule and earning a sizable tax-free profit from sale of their homes. Three, realized versus unrealized. Capital gains are realized and subject to tax when you sell investments that have increased in value. Gains that are on paper only are called unrealized gains and you don't pay any taxes until you sell the asset. For example, let's say your investment portfolio increased in value this year by $20,000, but you don't sell it. This is unrealized gain. You don't have to worry about taxes until you decide to sell it. Bottom line, if you want to truly build wealth, you need capital gains income. And in order to generate capital gains, you need to own assets that generate good capital gains. My favorite, invest in the stock market through a simple, low-cost, broad market index fund. Another way to generate income from assets, rent out assets that you own. 
Number seven income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt to supercharge your wealth growth, rental income. You own an asset like a single family home, rent it out, and you receive the rent that the tenant pays each month. Simple, right? Yes, in theory, but again, the devil is in the details. There are so many different ways to generate rental income. No two approaches are ever the same. Single family, apartment complex, commercial building. Convert an existing home into a rental. Buy a rundown property and renovate it. Invest in a commercial building with other investors. How about financing? You can buy a property outright in cash, or you can put a small amount down, renovate the home, refinance and cash out. The sky's the limit as to different ways you can get into generating rental income. But if you can figure out a way that works for you to generate rental income, it could be a great way again to diversify your streams of income. Number eight income stream you want to understand and start adding to your tool belt. Continuing the line of renting out assets, royalty income. This one is a bit unique and not everyone is qualified for or would even be interested in participating, but for some reason, it could work out. So I wanna talk about it here. Big picture, the general concept of royalty income is actually quite similar to rental income. But instead of renting out a physical asset like a property, we're renting out assets like a song, photo, or graphic design. A musician writes a song, and whenever their song is played on the radio, they will receive a royalty payment. If you're a designer, you develop an original graphics template and you receive a small royalty every time someone downloads your design. Or if you're an author, you write a book and publishers pay out a royalty payment every time a book is sold. Depending on the type of asset you create and its popularity, the amount of royalty income can vary, but the nice thing about this form of income is that once you create the asset, your work is essentially done. Your asset can continue to generate income for you, whether that is five cents or $5 for years to come. All right, let's move on to the final two. And a quick warning here. These last two, many would argue that they technically are not income. And to a point, I would agree. But they're still money, and they help me to offset my existing expenses or save money, so I want to talk about them here. Number nine income stream you want to be aware of and understand. Government payments. Now again, many of you might hear this and say, that's not an income stream. But before you stake me with pitchforks, hear me out. Government has tons of money. Money that comes from your taxes that they distribute to various programs every year. Think Social Security, Medicare, Obamacare, etc. And we receive money in different forms. Sometimes directly, like we did during the COVID crisis in the form of stimulus checks, or indirectly through public programs like city parks, public schools, and public services like police officers and firefighters. You don't have to pay any money to send your kids to a local public school, and most public safety services are covered as long as they're legitimate. Generally, there's no charge when police or the fire department respond to emergencies. But imagine if you had to pay out of pocket for many of these services. On average, the K-12 school spend around $16,000 per student annually. And an average private security guard costs around $30 to $50 per hour. So while many times we're not receiving money directly from the government, in my book, money saved is money earned. So understand all the available government payments and subsidies out there and maximize the benefit as much as possible. I personally use many government programs such as Obamacare to offset our health insurance costs, great free public schools to educate my kids, and tax credits to offset energy efficiency costs. Most recently, our kids' school started offering free after school because they received federal grants to offset the cost. To send my kids to a private after school would have cost us several thousand dollars per month. But thanks to government programs, we're able to keep that money in our pocket and reinvest it for greater wealth building. Number 10 income stream you want to be aware of and understand. Travel points. Again, many of you will argue that this is not an income stream, and technically that is true. But I wanna talk about it here because being aware of it and knowing how to earn it and use it can not only save you money, but provide you extra luxury benefits. When I'm talking about travel points, I'm talking about miles and points you generally earn through credit card spend. If you're strategic about what cards you own and use for existing expenses, the miles and points you accrue can act as additional stream of income you can use to pay for travels. For example, one of the cards that my wife and I frequently use is a Chase Sapphire Reserve Card. And no, they're not sponsoring this video and I don't have any relationship with them. Just been a user for a long time. Instead of putting our normal restaurant and travel expenses in a cashback card or a debit card, when we use this card, we earn three points for every dollar we spent. And yes, three points is not that much, and we don't actually spend that much time thinking about the points when we spent. There are travel hackers that go out of their way to juice out every point they earn on every card, but that's not us. We just have a few cards that we use regularly on our daily purchases. And by end of the year, when I check my points balance, I normally find that all our daily purchases have created a nice pile of points that I can apply towards offsetting or sometimes complete paying for our next vacation trip. Most recently, I was able to use my Chase points to completely pay for Southwest flights for the four of us, plus a week stay at a Hyatt resort in Mexico. Again, money saved is money earned in my book. So if you don't have this points income stream in your tool belt, it could be something you might want to consider. You're spending money anyways, so why not get some additional benefit while you're at it? Also another side benefit to owning some of these travel credit cards, and they should because they have annual fees, is that they provide some luxury travel benefits. Think early boarding, hotel status, and my personal favorite, lounge access. 
Yes, the Kim family likes to travel in style. Thank you guys for watching. In the spirit of spending, if you want to know some other ways I spend for maximum life fulfillment, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.